Guys, the Feast of Trumpets is coming up in just a few days. It's September 13th, and I want to do a message on the trumpets, okay? Um, first thing, um, as to the, uh, the Feast of the Feast of Trumpets, uh, I'm not going to really go over too much of that. I have another message on it. I'll put the link in the description field. Please watch that. We went over that in great detail. But guys, um, in the trumpets, in the feast, you basically have um, it used twice. In the Feast of Trumpets, there is the blowing of, it says the memorial, which we know is Zikron. Again, that word Zikron in the Hebrew, if you follow this channel. Okay. And it says the blowing of trumpets. Um, then it also says that you blow the trumpet on the Day of Atonement. And this would be for the Shemitah or for the Jubilee. Okay. So those are the feasts. But we, um, we have many other examples in the scriptures of, of the trumpets, guys. Um, and the one we're going to talk about gives us very clear insight into the Lord's return. And that is in Numbers um, chapter 10. We are given the, this trumpet. It's a silver trumpet for the assembly of the congregation. Okay? Now, the assembly of the congregation... Um, is listed in, in Numbers, like I said, Numbers chapter 10. I encourage you to read it. But for, um, for time's sake, uh, essentially what we have is you have the, uh, this trumpet. It's a silver trumpet. And there are three commands with this trumpet. The first command is for the princes. Okay? Now I want you to remember these three. This is going to be the consistent thing we're going to talk about, is these three trumpets or trumpet blasts okay um so the first trumpet is to gather a single trumpet you blow a single trumpet and you gather the princes okay now that um we know those princes we know to be the man child okay or the elect all right then we have a second trumpet um and this is blown as is to blow an alarm now this one was to blow the alarm for the East tribe. Now the East tribe we know to be East is Judah, okay? So we have uh, the, the blowing of the alarm. Now this expression, blowing of the alarm, is the first time it's used. Then it says the second time this blowing of the alarm trumpet is used, it is for the South camp. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this gives us very, very clear insight into the trumpets of the book of Revelation. Now, um, when you see trumpets in the New Testament, okay, um, you'll find this expression, voice of a trumpet, okay? So there's, there's two things. There's, like me, I could be speaking, but I could make my, my voice to sound like a trumpet, all right? That's one example. The other example is the actual sound of a trumpet, okay? And we're going to get into those Greek words because they're very, very important. But in the book of Revelation, we do find these trumpets, obviously. The first of which, John hears the Lord speaking to him with the voice of a trumpet. Okay? It mentions that in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, and Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, when John says, Oh, a, a door in heaven was opened to me. Okay? So John represents those princes or the man-child that we just saw in Numbers chapter 10, okay? Um, then the, the next time we find this voice of the trumpet um, is also in Matthew 24, verse 31. Now in English, guys, that's why I keep emphasizing the Hebrew and Greek words. In English, you just hear sound of the trumpet. You think, oh, sound of the trumpet. So, this, this example of sound of the trumpet is the same example as this one. No, you have to go back to the original language. Now, in Matthew 24, it says the voice, it actually says the sound of the trumpet, but it's not the sound of the trumpet. It's the phone. In the Greek word phone is where we get phone, is phone, and phone means voice, okay? This is very important because in Matthew 24 and in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it says the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. Okay? 
It does not say the other word we're going to look at in a moment. So we have the voice of the trumpet speaking to John, and then we have the voice of the trumpet when the Son of Man appears in the clouds and he gathers the elect from the four winds with the sound phone of the trumpet, okay, which lines up perfectly with the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice, phone, with the trumpet of God. These are all clearly describing the same thing, and obviously we conclude that this um, tribe, which is the east tribe of Judah, Judah is also um, the first tribe of the 144,000. So it is the 144,000 that is gathered at the time that the Lord appears, okay? So that's the, the, the trumpet, for the, the voice of the sound of the trumpet. John hears that, okay, in the earlier chapters of Revelation. And we have the voice of the trumpet, Matthew 24 and 1 Thessalonians 4. All these are one and the same, and this is for the man-child and the east, east tribe, which is Judah, or the 144,000, which brings us to the third trumpet. Now, if you remember, it said, blow the alarm a second time. That means that this trumpet is blown more than once, okay? Now, the second trumpet is the uh, Greek word salpizo, okay, salpizo. Now, salpizo actually means blowing a trumpet. It's not the voice of a trumpet. It's, it's actually blowing the trumpet, okay? So that's salpizo. Now, this word is only used in relation to the trumpets of Revelation, okay? The one time it's used, Matthew 6, it says, be not like, like the hypocrites, okay, which blow the trumpet, all right? That's in Matthew 6, and that's the time of the trumpets. The time of the trumpets is the time of the hypocrites, okay? It's a time of um, the great masses are going through the great tribulation, okay? But this word is also in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. And at the sound of the last trump. Now, in Greek, their sound is salpizo, okay? Then when you get to Revelation, chapter 8, chapter 9, the word is always salpizo, the, the blowing of the trumpet, okay? So we've, I have another video. I've already talked about that in great length, um, which I encourage you to watch. But now I want to get into um, some other aspects of this with relationship to the man-child, okay? Now, um, in Revelation 12, um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to draw this uh, distinction, guys, in Revelation 12 between the man-child and the children, okay? Uh, it does, it does uh, make a distinction there. In, um, in Revelation 12 and verse 5, and she brought forth the man-child, okay? Now, we're, we know the man-child is the princes, or that first trumpet, the voice of the trumpet, right? Okay. Uh, who is to rule the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God in his throne, okay? Um, but in, in the previous verse, um, it talks about before the woman was ready to, d to devour her child, okay? Um, and, um, and here we have this, this a child. So we have a man-child and we have a child, okay? Um, so this child is different, okay? And in order to see this disti distinction, guys, let's go, to, um, let's go to Isaiah 66, okay? And you'll see where I'm getting at now as we just bring all this together perfectly. Um, now, verse 7 says, Before she travailed, she brought forth in pain, and she was delivered a man-child. So we know the man-child is the princes. This is the elect. Okay? Um, and then it says um, in verse 8, um, For as soon as I travailed, she brought forth her children. So again, we have the, the man-child and the children. We have this distinction, just like Revelation 12. Okay? Now, the reason I'm mentioning this, and I'm... I'm presenting emphasis is that Isaiah 66 and verse 6 says a voice of noise from the city a voice from the temple a voice of the Lord okay so this is the voice of the trumpet okay that renders recompense to his enemies let me read that again a voice of noise from the city from New Jerusalem from the temple the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. That's exactly this voice here. And guys, this is a consistent pattern 
as well with um, Exodus 19. Let's, uh, let's also, you, you may be familiar with Exodus 19, um, but um, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mount. Okay, this is a perfect description of the Lord's Jesus, his return, okay? And the voice of a trumpet exceedingly loud. See how there's this voice of the trumpet? The voice of the trumpet, guys, is always associated with the Lord coming, okay? The word salpizo is always associated with the trumpets of Revelation, okay? But let's, if you read all of this, it's a perfect description of what's going to happen. Um, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Um, in Mount, Mount Sinai, it was altogether smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, in smoke, and ascended as a smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain qu quaked. And the voice of the trumpet sounded long, waxing louder and louder, okay? And, and God answered, Moses by voice, okay? So this is um, what we know as Pentecost, or the Lord uh, descending in Exodus, and this is exactly what we have, is this voice of the trumpet when the Lord Jesus comes, okay? Um, so guys, I hope you understand that. We have these three trumpets in Numbers chapter 10. We have the princes, we have the east camp, which is Judah, and we have the south camp. Now these two camps, you blow the alarm, and then you blow the alarm the second time. So there's actually two trumpets. There's two blowings of the alarm. There's two, um, there's one that's called a harpazo, one is called the twinkling of an eye, a salpizo, okay? I can't make this any more clear. If you, if you need more information, I do have a playlist on the Rapture series because you guys still don't understand this, but um, please watch the playlist. As well, please watch the Feast of Trumpets. As well, please watch the video on the voice and sound of the trumpet okay so guys thanks for watching please um let me know if you have any questions and as well watch and pray they be counted worthy to escape all these things in yeshua's name amen